Hello. Hi, everybody. <coughs> um, look like it's a full house. Um, let's start. This, uh, this presentation is about um, Ironic. And uh, actually, it's in the um, hybrid track. Uh, basically, uh, hybrid can mean many things. But uh, for us at Internap, hybrid doesn't mean the usual um, definition that exists in the OpenStack world. It means mostly uh, a mix between uh, physical and virtual infrastructure. So if you hear me say hybrid during this presentation, I'm talking about um, physical and virtual and not private cloud and public cloud. Although, as we'll see with the um, physical infrastructure, you could deploy uh, a cloud, a private cloud, and interface our public cloud with it. Um, so this uh, talk is uh, divided in two parts. First, we'll have an introduction of Ironic, kind of basic, but uh, short. <coughs> and then we'll uh, move on to how Ironic is used at Internet. So um, Internet is, the, um, is a public cloud service provider. So we have regions around the world that already run OpenStack and have been for a couple of years. Uh, Singapore is still not on. It's going to be on the uh, beginning of 2016. So uh, these regions are uh, classic OpenStack deployments. And uh, Internet is basically trying to um, use OpenStack not only for public cloud, but for um, the complete orchestration of the data center. So basically, Internet is going full OpenStack. Um, so the first step is to have OpenStack regions in all the data centers. So there's, there's more data centers than uh, what I've shown before. That will be the first step. So providing, uh, like I said, a classic uh, public cloud. Then we're going to go with Ironic bare metal everywhere. So we'll, ha we'll be able to provision bare metal uh, servers in all these uh, facilities. And then, who knows? Uh, all we know for now is that we're going uh, full OpenStack. So we're going to go with uh, probably NFV in the future, anything, SDC, all the good stuff. The, the goal, obviously, is to have OpenStack as a central orchestrator for all these uh, data centers. So about the hybrid infrastructure. Um, so the hybrid infrastructure, as I've said, a mix between physical and virtual is something that we do already uh, for a lot of our clients. It works well with uh, our current networking model, which is VLAN. And also, it's, um, it's well suited for the type of uh, customers we have. So big customers, big deployments, and a rather small number of uh, customers. And um, so that allows the, these, uh, these customers, like big enterprise customers, to uh, basically extend in the cloud instead of moving right away. For example, if they have, like a, let's say, a, a big database backend, maybe Microsoft SQL or whatever they use in the enterprise these days, they don't have to move all this to the cloud. In one uh, fell swoop, they can uh, just uh, spin up virtual machines for other parts of their infrastructure, let's say web servers or application, and keep them at all. So they keep this, uh, this MS SQL cluster, for example, that they probably have a hard time just keeping up. They don't have to move them to the cloud. So that's good. Um, so why bare metal? Why, why offer bare metal? Well, we already provide a high performance VM. So some people would say that um, these, these big VMs are enough to, uh, to run any kind of infrastructure. But actually, I guess there's still good reasons to, uh, to go with the, uh, with the bare metal. For example, uh, like I said, uh, personal beliefs. Some customers, they just want the, uh, they think it's not safe or they, don't, they won't have, they don't want to have the 5% performance hit of a virtual machine. So again, we're a service provider, so customers is always right. But there's obviously good reasons to, uh, to go bare metal. As we've seen in the, uh, the talks, uh, the keynotes yesterday and today, containers are uh, getting a lot of traction. Also, some of these uh, customers, they provide uh, hypervisor infrastructure, for example, VMware clusters and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Oh, and also for uh, one of my friends here, <laughs> Uh, sometimes uh, people may want to access, uh, for example, a GPU or any other uh, hardware devices that are residing in the, uh, the bare metal servers. So that makes sense for them. Um, OK, so just so we're all at the, uh, the same level regarding Ironic, uh, what does Ironic do? Uh, in short, it provisions uh, bare metal servers. But uh, if we look at these steps as if a human was doing them, 
So basically, Ironic will not rack the server for you and connect it, but um, after that, it will power up the machine. It will install, install the operating system, just like a human would with the uh, Pixie boot or uh, ISO. Configure the network. Uh, configure the network equipment. So that's, um, we're doing that with Netman. That's a major, uh, major step in our uh, work towards automating the, uh, the data center. So we'll talk more about Netman. Uh, also, then the, uh, the technician would um, log into the machine, configure the uh, networking in the operating system. So Ironic will do that for you. And um, at the end, it will give you a root password or SSH key. And you can uh, end the IP of the server and you can ping it. So um, obviously, to do all that, Ironic needs uh, other parts of uh, OpenStack. So um, this is coming from the, um, the Ironic documentation. I just want to say, uh, so I've been working with OpenStack for a while, and the documentation is really coming together. Uh, for example, the Ironic documentation is very, uh, very impressive. So kudos to whoever is uh, working on the uh, documentation. I think it was lacking in the past, but uh, not anymore, I, at least not in the Ironic project, because it's very nice. We can see there that Ironic is uh, tightly integrated with the rest of the cloud. It talks to uh, Nova, Neutron, and, and Cinder, uh, actually Swift. Um, so that. So this tight integration is good, but um, there are some, uh, some differences. Mainly, the Ironic API is not uh, user exposed, so a user, cannot, uh, a user of the cloud cannot tap the uh, Ironic API, contrary to the most of the other OpenStack projects, I'd say. Um, yeah, that's it. So as I've said, Ironic API not exposed to the end user, so that's fundamental. Ironic belongs to the service provider. In our case, we're a we're service providers, so all these servers are ours, and we simply uh, lend them to customers. So, uh, so we're the owner of Ironic. It's for us and not for the customer. Um, also, I want to point out that uh, Nova provides a complete abstraction of, uh, these, uh, of Ironic. So basically, if we look at the two, uh, two lines, uh, the two comments there, Nova boot, so the only thing that changes is the uh, flavor. So by changing the flavor with the same exact uh, Nova boot command, you'll end up with a virtual machine or a bare metal server. So uh, that's very powerful. That's a powerful abstraction. Uh, came with a cost, but uh, I think it's still a good, uh, good decision that was uh, taken. Um, so this is a small, uh, small uh, schema I made just to um, help visualize that the, uh, the, the user will interface with OpenStack at the top layer. And um, the middle layer, the service provider layer, is actually for for us, the service provider. So these two systems, we have Ironic and Netman. We'll come back later to Netman, which is an in-house project. Uh, these two, they have APIs. They're really um, similar to the rest of the OpenStack uh, ecosystem, but they are reserved to uh, our operation, so internal only. And we have the physical layer, which is the actual uh, metal that still exists because sometimes uh, in the OpenStack Summit, people are really, really high in the cloud, but. Uh, it all comes down to uh, metal at the end, electricity and all that stuff. So um, just want to point out one thing about the uh, Ironic Python agent. I think the IP is um, something that was done by Rackspace. So I don't know if there's anyone from Rackspace here. Nope. Great work for, for, uh, from these guys. I think this is what really makes the server part of OpenStack. Basically, it's, um, it's a RAM disk. You boot it, and while it's booted, it's not available to the customer. It's either for provisioning or decommissioning or doing any kind of stuff you want. It's very extensible. But uh, while the server is running the, this IPA, it is part of OpenStack, and you can do with it what you want. So you can install the customer's image in case of provisioning, and you can also do all kind of checks, erase all disk after the customer is uh, not needing the server anymore, upgrade firmware. You can do analysis and stuff like that. So really extensible, again, um, real. Um, Real good job from these guys, and it's part of the, um, the standard uh, deployment of Ironic, I, I believe, as of Liberty. OK, so we, uh, here we have a, a small warning. Uh, <coughs> we're using the cells, and it's uh, required, and uh, we're currently running Kilo. It's re required, but experimental, so yes, that, I that exists in uh, the OpenStack world. Um, we'll see why it's required. Uh, it's simply. Uh, uh, well, we'll see, but the, um, the experimental part is not that bad. It breaks a couple of stuff, but uh, 
it's not that bad. I mean, it's not like it's failing or it's crashing or anything like that. It's mostly that you'll lose some usability of, of uh, for example, the flavors. You cannot just create flavors in all cells. You have to maybe uh, go in the database for now. I'm sure some of these uh, problems will be fixed, but um, uh, the Nova team is coming up with cells version 2. So maybe uh, if you're not uh, in a hurry like, like we were, maybe you could wait for cells v2. Um, so this is a classic uh, cell scheduling. I just want to point out, it's a f I was jet lagged when I did this. It's very complicated, but it's ac actually very simple. Uh, <laughs> so um, basically, the Nova boot, w there's an additional level of scheduling that happens between the cells. So like we said previously with the two Nova boot commands, so it, it will see, is it the bare metal or a compute? If it's a compute, it'll send it to the standard compute cells, which are running the classic filters that we all know, RAM filter, for example. So it will, it will uh, look for a node that has enough RAM to fit the virtual machine. So that's simple. If it's a, it's, if it's a bare metal server, actually, the, the filters are different. So it's looking for exact RAM, because you want to have the uh, server that exactly match what's in the flavor. So just there, we see the difference between the two. You cannot have these two filters in the same environment. So either you're looking for a node that has enough space, or you're looking for a node that has the exact amount of RAM you're looking for. So just because of this little uh, problem, we have, to, uh, we have to use cells. The cells also provide the scalability, so that's a good thing for a service provider. But um, let's say if, if I was in a, a private enterprise trying to have an ironic uh, cloud, um, I, would, I would be stuck with cells without needing it. So currently, I think it's the, it's the case. It may change in the future. I'm sure if you're... Uh, if you have a development team, you could maybe mess around with the, the scheduling, but then you'll be stuck with uh, this decision later on. Um, actually, if I was um, trying to uh, deploy Ironic in a private environment, in an enterprise, I would look at this product. Well, product is this uh, program from OpenStack. It's called Bifrost. Um, it, it enables you to uh, have uh, Ironic deployment that will provision uh, bare metal servers but without having to build the whole cloud around it, especially sw uh, Swift, for example. That is a requirement for Ironic. So, so if you want to do a quick uh, deployment of Ironic for a private business, I think that's uh, probably better than um, the whole thing. And uh, as we can see, it has um, an hardware enrollment through a C CSV file. So we're going to talk about hardware enrollment in a moment. It uses IPA, it uses config drive, so all the good stuff. It's, uh, it's going to be a real um, ironic deployment. All right, so a uh, second part, um, ironic at Internap. So now we're going to delve a bit more into uh, uh, how we use it, what we do with it, and uh, the changes we needed to, to make. <coughs> so um, different sections. There's uh, inventory management. We're going to talk about that. Netman, a great product that we came up with and um, is open source. Uh, and we'll talk about the limitations that we couldn't accept at the, at the time. Inter interface bonding and VLAN trunking to allow uh, customers to have a better experience in terms of uh, reliability with the interface bonding and also uh, in terms of uh, usability with the uh, multiple networks. And the uh, section about attached detach, which uh, has a SDN-like feeling. All right, so inventory. Yes, so if you have uh, 30,000 servers, you may need something better than a CSV file. I would agree with that statement. Uh, we're, we're lucky at Internet we have Ubersmith. Ubersmith is an ERP system that um, already uh, knows about all the servers we have in all these uh, different facilities. It knows about what's in the server, knows about what it's connected to. So just with these two, we're going to see that this is uh, almost enough to, uh, to properly uh, operate the uh, Ironic Cloud. It has information about other stuff also. Uh, li as I said, it's, uh, it's an ERP system, so it can do uh, invoicing support and stuff like that, but that's uh, our scope. So, um, so if, if we go back to the three layers we had previously, we can see that um, the physical layer, uh, any service provider we will have some kind of burning process at the physical layer. When you provision a whole rack, you will run some kind of software that will uh, do some diagnostics and stuff like that, make sure that everything is connected properly, works, works well. And this will feed Ubersmith with the actual information of what is located where. So that's the first step. That, that was happening already before we, we wanted to uh, use Ironic. 
So what we did, we simply built a system that will take this information and uh, push it on the second layer. So push it to Ironic mostly. And um, we'll see how it goes. So what kind of information the ERP system pushes to the uh, Ironic node? So basically the ERP system will create an Ironic node and uh, corresponding to the physical server that already exists in the physical world. And it will push down information. Uh, like, like I've said, the same information as before. Uh, what's needed in, in Ironic for to instantiate a, a flavor? So CPU, RAM, and disk. It will also push uh, power information. So uh, the IP address of the power distribution unit and the port to which, uh, or ports to which this server is connected. So at this point, Ironic has the information to power on and off the machine. And it will also push information regarding uh, how the server is connected uh, on the networking side. So management IP for the switch and again the ports. So after this uh, enrollment process, Ironic is completely independent. So we, we don't have like a tight coupling to Ubersmith. It's really like we, um, we fill this information manually, basically. So I um, don't know if you can read that. But uh, OK, so this is the Ironic Node Show. So we can see that uh, we're using the NGAC driver, which is uh, the driver we, we developed. Um, so the node knows about the uh, PDU, and it knows the outlet. So uh, with this driver, uh, right at this point, we can do uh, Ironic Node set power state on and off, and we will power on and off the server. It's far from, from being installed in, in the Ethernet network, but that will be the first step. Regarding the uh, network inf information, if we do an uh, Ironic port show on the ports um, that, are, that exist inside this node, we'll see that uh, we have the uh, switch information as well as ports. And um, the way we, we do it is not that Ironic will interface directly the networking equipment. That would be uh, too, too, uh, too much for Ironic. So we rely on Netman. Netman is a system that we developed. And this, this system will, uh, will abstract all the uh, network configuration from Ironic. So Ironic will simply ask Netman, for example, uh, please move this server to the provisioning VLAN. And uh, Netman will do the job. And then move it to this or this network. And again, Netman will take care of all the uh, networking configuration. So Netman, as I've said, it was um, developed in-house. It's uh, open source. So if you guys want to try it, if you have needs for it. Um, it's written in Python. We have a, a really good team of developers. So, uh, and the, these guys, they work with uh, OpenStack all the time. So it's ve very similar to uh, the rest of OpenStack. It's not like we're not trying to give you a bunch of Perl scripts here. It has a REST API. Um, it's, uh, it supports a lot of uh, equipment because as a service provider, we cannot just, uh, we don't have just a couple of switches. We have uh, different switches and routers. So. Netman has to be able to work properly with all of these. So it's a, it's a good, uh, good piece of software. Um, OK, here's um, a graph of uh, what's going on when we, boot, uh, uh, w when we boot Nova or when we try to, to get the uh, bare metal server. So we have the Nova boot command issued at the top. Uh, Ironic would ask again, like I've said, will ask Netman to move this uh, machine to the provisioning VLAN. Netman, in turn, will turn to the uh, networking gear, do its magic. And then Ironic will um, power up um, the PDU because it knows the information already. At this point, the server will boot up in the provisioning VLAN. It will, uh, take, uh, it will pixie boot, get uh, IPA. So at this point, IPA is running on the machine. Um, to IPA sends artbeat back. It will continue doing so until the end. So. Ironic knows exactly what's going on on the machine all this time. It will naturally, what we're trying to do is here is boot an image. So it will um, fetch the image from Swift through Glance, right in on the, on the hard disk, and uh, turn it off. And then, again, Ironic knows that, that uh, the installation has completed. It will simply ask Netman to move the server to the tenant networks, uh, network or networks. And Netman will simply interface the networking gear. And at the end, we have a final power on where a machine will be booted in the tenant networks, properly configured with the config drive. And um, after three or four minutes, it will start pinging. So, uh, so that's it. Um, that's it. Uh, we, we achieve our goal at this point of provisioning uh, tenant uh, or tenant isolated uh, physical machines to customers. 
Uh, doing this, we, uh, we uh, got stuck on a couple of uh, limitations that we had to overcome. Uh, at first, Ironic did not have a tenant isolation. Uh, we solved this with Netman. There's a talk at uh, 340 regarding uh, tenant isolation in Ironic. I, I want to go there. I want to see how they did it. Pretty sure they didn't use Netman. So <laughs> we'll see that. Um, it didn't have support for bonding. Bonding is basically when you have a server that is connected to two different switches to make sure that uh, you know, if as a service provider we need to uh, uh, update the firmware on a switch or something like that, we need to make sure that we do not uh, impact the customer. So that was a requirement for us. And it did not have support for trunking, which also is a requirement for us because we want to be able to give the ability to our customers to have more than one network uh, to, this, uh, to this server, just like they do with virtual machines. So here's the main, uh, the main problem we had. In Ironic, there's currently a 1-1 a one -one relationship between the virtual, virtual uh, interface and physical interface. And uh, that with, uh, with the bonding, we would end up with one port group. And that would mean at some point, if we did not modify Ironic, that would mean having only one network on the server, which was not, uh, at, at the least, at the minimum, we needed uh, two networks. And we needed more than two, actually. So we were able to to uh, write this code that uh, these modifications to Ironic to be able to have uh, as much as 10 uh, VIF on a port group. So a customer can boot um, with 10 different networks and they will all be trunked to the server. I have a little drawing here that helps explain. So we, we see the two switches at the top of the rack. So this is a rack. I'm sorry for this uh, modeling, not very, not very pretty, but so a server is connected to the two different switches, like I've said. So if we need to shut down the switch to do firmware up upgrade, it doesn't impact the customer. If this switch or this switch loses its uplink for some reason to the router, it doesn't impact the customer. That was very important. And then we trunk all the networks that the customers decided in the Nova boot or in the interface attach or detach, whatever. We, we have the control over this. So it will see all these uh, networks connected in the link aggregation. So st basically standard stuff, but uh, just automated through Ironic. Uh, one other problem we had is that the, um, the, op uh, the uh, operating system network configuration. So on the left side, you have the, uh, what it looks like, for example, for a standard virtual machine. So that's not a problem. That's been in um, OpenStack for a really long time. But now with the, with the bonding, we, we need information about the, the VLANs or the provider networks. I guess that was not available. So we had to switch to a, a new format to pass this information to the, uh, to the config drive, the network info. And, um, and it required CloudNet 2.0 for it to properly configure this, uh, the network as um, to properly reflect what was asked by the, the customer at boot time. So remember, uh, we want to make sure that at the end of this instantiation, the, the whole uh, process is uh, automated. At the end, the machine has to ping. So this, this has to be perfect. So we had to um, backport a switch from uh, a patch from Cloudinet 2.0, I think, because we're still we're still not at 2.0, and then that was about it. So uh, this will repeat here for all the networks that the uh, customer asked for. Um, and we also had the um, ability to attach and detach networks from an existing server. So just like we would do on a on a virtual machine, we can do surface attach, pick up a, a new network. And it will, I've seen it in, in Horizon, that's an actual screenshot. The line will, uh, will just uh, appear. So it has a SDN feeling. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, we were, I was satisfied with that. But uh, we're, we're going to move, um, we're going to do more with that. I think at some point we're going to try and leverage even more Netman, maybe do uh, uh, the ability to do create a network, for example. So that would be even better. So obviously, when, when you do this, Netman will do its magic. A, a new line will be added to the trunk, a new colorful line. But the problem is um, we don't have any agent on the operating system at Internaps. So uh, you will have to, uh, to modify the uh, network configuration by hand. So basically, we'll have to uh, go back in the, in the server and add a new, um, a new bonding interface. Um, OK, I want to talk about enrollment a bit. Um, this is uh, something that's, uh, I would say, uh, I don't know if it's really important, but uh, I wanted to talk about it because I've been working on it. 
So basically, um, there's a difference between uh, there's a major difference between a physical server and any kind of virtual machines, is that um, a server once it's installed, it's just a server. There's no security group. There's no nothing. So it doesn't really matter if it was installed using Ironic or maybe it was installed in '95 with the CD-ROM. It doesn't really matter. Um, we can we can import this or enroll this into OpenStack to accelerate. Uh, OpenStack as the central point of orchestration for the, for a customer. So let's say a customer has a bunch of servers, like 100 servers installed. I don't know how. We can still enroll them into Ironic, and if he does Nova List, it will see the server, and he can spin up new servers. And you know we're moving these guys closer to OpenStack, even without waiting for them to uh, cycle this hardware. So how we do this? Uh, we use the fake server of Ironic. So we create the node just like before with the information coming from Ubersmith. Create the Ironic node. But using the fake driver is very important, because uh, if not, when you do an overboot, you're going to wipe the customer server. So that wouldn't be very good. So we create neutron parts around it, just to, again, imitate what's, um, what's on the server, so all the IP addresses that, that are there. And with the fake driver in place, we do an overboot instance, and we pinpoint it to make sure that the, the, the boot, the Nova boot will end up right on this particular server. And after that, we switch back to the real Ionic driver. So at this point, even if the machine was installed in 95 with a CD-ROM, if he does Nova List, the customer will see this machine. If he does Nova Reboot, it will reboot the machine. Nova Delete will delete it. And even Attach Detach can, uh, can work with that. So the, um, one of the important parts is that this was, looks like it's, um, I don't know, it's, it's faked or it, that will cause problem later on, but it, not at all. As soon as the customer will do a Nova Delete, the Ironic will take over, and the machine will become a real Ironic node, being deleted by Ironic and being put back in the, uh, the inventory of Ironic. And if it's a good hardware and it passes the test, uh, maybe we're going to give it to another customer. So um, yeah, I just want to, this is only to, to point out that this, there's a, a lot of uh, traction in Ironic, so a lot of uh, new specs are being approved for uh, the next cycle. Um, some of those are stuff that we uh, we did on our side with because these these uh, specs were not ready or are not ready in time or whatever. But um, the cost of that is that we'll probably have to reintegrate our code using using those to make sure that at some point uh, the code we have is uh, supported by the community and doesn't just exist in our OpenStack deployment. So again, plenty of traction uh, around Ironic and. Uh, like we've said in, we've seen in the keynote uh, yesterday and today, the uh, basically the container will probably help Ironic gain even more traction. So after that, we're back to the uh, back full circle to our hybrid infrastructure from the start. So the only difference, it's just like before, the only difference is that um, um, these customers can now use a central point to spin up new physical server if they need new hardware, new physical hardware, or if they, need, if they need to extend again this, uh, this hardware with virtual machines, they can too. So um, that's it. It's uh, goal here was to, uh, to bring these customers uh, into OpenStack. And I think uh, with the virtual and the bare metal side of it, I think we're, uh, we're in good shape to do that. That's it. Thank you. I don't know if you have any, any questions. There's a mic. I think there's a mic there. Or uh, if you scream loud enough. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So have you had any issues with your virtual? Oh. OK. OK, we got it. <laughs> uh, have you had any issues with uh, obviously having sort of a, an SDN style network on the virtual side? And having you know multiple IP addresses spun up and sort of overwhelming your physical top of rack switches or physical hardware on the the bare metal side. But that's a good question. But actually, there's no SDN even on the virtual side. Okay. We, we're using uh, ML2 and um, VLAN, so uh, uh, provider networks. So it's really we're going straight to the metal as quickly as possible. Because again, this is a service provider environment, so it's mm -hmm. very important for for my team who are supporting the cloud that we put this and the networking team court as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and, and these guys, Good move. Yeah, Good move. they're experts. And um, yeah, so it's, it's a giant infrastructure. So it's, not, it's really not something that we could uh, use OpenVSwitch with. Or sure. yeah, there's already plenty of 
hardware there and know-how and all that. So uh, um, we picked this uh, networking model for the virtual side maybe two or three years ago, and uh, very satisfied, never had any problem. Again, because we go to the metal as quickly as possible. And, and that helped us now because, yeah, if we went with the full SDN solution, then we would have to, to mix the two. But uh, the, the problem with that is the, um, we see the limitation of VLAN, the limitations mm -hmm. we all know. And um, be because we have uh, uh, large customers, it's not so bad, but we already know that the now that VXLAN is uh, possible with unicast only, we're going to go with uh, VXLAN. Uh, probably th this is the next major, uh, major project for us. So we already have a good solution. If you go VXLAN instead of VLAN, you can have the exact same right. thing going on. And yeah. yeah. Two questions. One is, do you foresee that in eventually the API will be extended to support bonding by default rather than the way you did it? You mean the virtual machine? No, the ironic at the bare at the, at the oh, metal part. Yes, uh, yes, actually, yes. I, I was supposed to put uh, links to the... Uh, please have a look at the ironic documentation and you'll see that there's specs and blueprints for exactly that. Okay. Secondly, also, when you're bringing up your bare metals, are you doing some health check on the pure bare metal part that it d does meet your specs or criteria that you have? Yeah, well, um, well, the the scheduler will take care of that, meaning that the flavor that you picked will okay. will be yes. exactly. But again, like I said, in IPA, what's once IPA is running on the server, you can do all kind of checks, even like overwrite firmware. You can do it's very extensible, so IPA is the key to to uh, doing all the diagnostics you want. Question there. Yeah, I, I have not had any experience with Ironic, but my understanding is that when you um, spin up an Ironic instance, that uh, it, it takes a while because, as you referred to, you have to wipe the instance. Um, so Ac actually, sorry, the, the wiping is happening at the delete stage. So when okay. you delete the, uh, the Nova instance, it will wipe the, the okay. Ironic node. So when you boot up, it's already uh, ready to, to receive the image. So yes, it can take, let's say, three minutes, up to 10 minutes, depending on the network throughput you have from Swift and you know, the necessary uh, writing of the, uh, the disk image. OK, so you don't see significant latency. Like I've seen some blog posts where it says it's like over an hour. No, no, definitely yeah. not. The, the erasing of the disk can be really long. So again, that's happening at the end of the okay. lifecycle of the machine. But if you, know, if you have a small number of machines, let's say in the private deployment, you have 10 servers. If uh, you cannot be, you know, if there are, you can have all 10 servers deleting for an hour or something. So you have to have enough servers that the rotation doesn't impact uh, delivery. Thank you. Welcome. So you talked about uh, Netman, right? Yeah. I was thinking, uh, how is Neutron and Netman working together? Just wanted to understand. Um, yeah, well, Netman and, and Neutron have, have probably. Uh, <laughs> no link at all, actually, because Netman is is only um, Netman is is setting the configuration on the switch. So obviously, it needs to know. Well, Netman is go is going to probe Neutron at some point, maybe to get the um, provider ID or the VLAN ID, and then that is passed to. Uh, I'm not even sure if that's what's happening. I think it's coming from yeah. But it's yeah, Martin. I'll take it. We have developers here, maybe. But uh, I'm pretty sure there's no there's no link in, in what you you think, meaning uh, strong links. If there's information going from Neutron to Ironic, it must be VLAN number, and that's about it, right? But I think there's a as I've said, there's a talk at 3:40 regarding uh, tenant isolation. So I, I'd like to know uh, what's going on. I'll be there. So maybe w I'll learn something. Um, so uh, Netman is talking to the switches. Yes. Um, so how is um, is it compared to the SDN? Yeah, I'm no network expert, so that's why I say SDN-like features. I don't know if, if I know that if uh, we had like a real network expert here, we'll see like a big difference between this and SDN. I, g I have a feeling, <laughs> but um, uh, for us, it, it, b it basically comes down to this. Uh, we have these. We have this networking model in the data center, VLAN and and VLAN trunk and switches. So we cannot move uh, simply uh, into a full SDN solution. So I'm still not sure uh, if we if we have VXLAN and we have a uh, perfect orchestration of this. I'm not even sure it's called SDN. Uh, I'd, I've been wondering all day seriously. So um, I'm sorry I cannot answer more. Maybe we have a network expert here. We can. Uh so it will be um, kind of. A duplicate or 
you know, with the SDN, you have to adapt to uh, different kinds of switches, the specific switches. Yeah, so, so basically all, all that Netman does to these switches is setting up uh, VLANs, subnets, and, and trunks. So, so, so that's so simple that I believe it's, it's, not, it's not SDN. There's no split between the uh, control plane, data plane, or whatever they call it. So, yeah, confirmed by the network expert here. So, yeah, uh, again, because it's only working with VLAN, it's really doing simple stuff. So there's no, uh, no SDN complication happening, I think. I would say. Um, so how is hardware failure, uh, say, a Nova boot fails because of the hardware failure or something? May in user may not see it because your schedule will take care of it. But how do you keep track of those servers, and how, how often do you see such failures? Yeah, um, I can see we've, we see a lot of failures because uh, this, this hardware has been uh, pass through the burn-in, but as, it, as it's used, obviously, uh, the servers are going to fail, obviously, and um, I don't see any, any difference. Um, you have to understand in Internap has been uh, in the process of recycling hardware and installing hardware for customers for, uh, for years, so it's basically uh, uh, the only difference with this is the automation and, and, and the API, so there's no big differences, but um, no, I think we just have a better control with this because of the IPA where we can at the end of the life cycle maybe uh, if a disk is failing and the servers uh, the customer says okay I don't want this server and the, the old system it could we could miss that but with IPA we can have diagnostic and see okay the server would return back to the customer base but actually there's a failed disk or something and automating all the uh, the checks and just removing it from from the pool so I think it's it's an improvement over what was there already yeah quick question do you know if um, Netman will actually be rolled into Ironic at some point in the future because that seems like a pretty valuable yeah, thing to, it do, is. to do bare metal switches. It, and it is to us. Um, again, at, uh, at 340, I'll be there, see uh, how it go. Okay. <laughs> if that's what they had in mind. I don't think they're going to talk about Netman. I just mean, do they see this as something that could happen maybe in, their, in whatever they're developing or right. uh, is it something that only us do? Uh, Netman, again, it, it fits for us because we're using the VLAN model, so we'll probably extend the, um, Netman to use VXLAN, and at this point it may be useful for a lot more people, but uh, maybe maybe at some point it's going to be Ironic and Netman, VXLAN, and it's going to be a reference architecture. Who knows? Cool. Good presentation, by the way. Thanks. So can you expand a little bit into the functions that uh, Uber Smith does for you? So for example, what I'm actually curious about is if you depend on a particularly well-defined, tested, validated networking cabling structure, um, or if you do auto discovery of some kind, and maybe like Netman just pulls those guys too? I'm not sure I can answer that, because that, that would be the burn-in process. So if we go, if we go back. Uh, so you're talking about when when the burn-in process is running and the information is putting in is put into uh, Ubersmith, uh, this is something for an another team actually that at Internet that could answer that. But uh, uh, like I've said, we're relying on this for uh, for um, <coughs> that has been in place for years. So all I know is that at the end, so I start <laughs> I start here basically. At the end, uh, all I know is that the inf I rely on the information in Ubersmith and. Uh, um, I don't know if your question is, re is related to maybe the use of LLDP or something like that to make sure that the port, the switch ports are, are the right ones or something like that. Uh, Again, that mostly could mostly posi position. For example, like port number five in the switch matches uh, the server that's actually in U number thirty-five or something. Yeah. Well, LDP could really use. I don't gotcha. know if you know this tool. Um, I don't know if it's it's probably leveraged into the burning process. I wouldn't know. But uh, but I, I've seen it. I've s it is. Oh yeah, that's it. And it's another team who takes care of that. But I know that there's um, a blueprint in Ironic regarding regarding LLDP. I don't remember exactly, but again, um, to help if you don't have this process, so you can rely on LLDP on the server. Maybe IPA can run LLDP for you. It will get information from the switches <coughs> regarding the, the switch port of each connections, and then you would get the burning process basically. Get it. And the specs re required to pass from Ubersmith to uh, Ironic are those standards or something that you modified? Uh, no, that's standard. Uh, what we're looking here, for example, this... Uh, you mentioned a CSV file, I guess, or something, no? No, no, not at all. So basically, uh, what, uh, when we... Um, the, so the second step here, the step two, the uh, enrollment, what we do is uh, we tap the Ironic API and we push uh, information into Ironic as metadata. Okay, got it. So nothing special.
Mm. Microphone just uh, beside you. So uh, what about if the, the clients want to uh, upgrade the memory or there's some hardware fault, so we need to replace the, for example, the NIC card, the MAC address totally change. So what about the, the branding process I have to, because the, the bare metal already provision for the yeah. customer. So what, what were we going to do? Well, in this case, if, um, if the customer just want to upgrade RAM or something like that, it's probably something we would not support because if we change the RAM in the server uh, and we return back to the pool, then we won't have probably a flavor uh, addressing this, this machine, so it won't be able to come back. So at some point, that would be... Um, so uh, on the day one, the, uh, the hardware specification has to match to the, yeah, to exactly. the flavor. Yeah, so exactly. So at this point, if a customer wants more RAM or something, we would probably assist him into booting a new machine okay. with more RAM and... and Okay, so what about the replacement of the, the, the hardware, like the MAC address, the link cards change? Um, so that's good. Yeah, because the point. first burning, they, 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 they pull the information like MAC address of everything, right? Yeah. If the link card fail, I, I need to replace it. So, so what is happening? That's a good question. Uh, again, that's uh, more for the operations team. Um, so... Okay. But uh, yes, for the, for the machine to, to stay in Ironic and, and at some point we would have to update the Ironic node with the new MAC address or something okay. like that. So I think a uh, uh, second question. So uh, f typically in compute node, we have uh, open switch. So when we, because when we launch an instance, we need to inject the security group, right? Yeah. So there's an IP table written in the, the, right. the, 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 the compute node, right? Yeah. So in it's uh, ironic, so when we provision the bare metal, so where is the security group? This There's thing? no security group whatsoever. So how can I control the security? For, for like the port 22 or... Well, I, either um, you have a firewall, because uh, we okay. offer firewall, manage firewall or something okay. like that. So have but to manage on the level fee router. Yeah, or, or you install IP tables on the machine and do it. Uh, oh, okay. So basically, again, we are just talking about... Uh, Exactly like if the customer was asking for a server in the old-fashioned way, me meaning there's no okay. security group. So there's no, there will never be any, any, anything like security group for bare metal. Uh, especially for us at Internet, we don't even want to have an agent on the, on the server. Okay. And there's no, since there's no hypervisor underneath, there's nothing much you can do. So to, uh, to address this problem, um, when, we, when I was talking about moving more and more towards OpenStack as the central orchestrator, at some point we could have... Um, this, this firewall, this physical firewall, is managed also by, by OpenStack. So instead of having security groups, you could, you could say, uh, through the OpenStack API, I want this IP to be passing through a firewall, and I want this, this uh, uh, what they call a service chaining. Okay. Service function chaining, SFC. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Any more questions? All right. Oh. Yes. Oh, sorry, there's a mic coming in. Yeah, okay. Uh, just, just one question uh, about this ironic uh, instance. Uh, my question is can we do the snapshot for this ironic instance in case some, uh, you know, planned ac uh, maintenance uh, activity or something like that? Yeah. No, you, we, we would offer uh, the, all the services we offer currently to this, the Bermuda server. So, for example, we have uh, managed backups and stuff like that that you could use. But um, at 340, there's another talk in parallel with the one I was talking about. It's a mix between uh, Cinder and, uh, is it? Yeah, Cinder and, yeah. So this, is, this could be interesting. So at some point, if you have a SAN, you could expose it to our Ironic and maybe it wouldn't be... Um, a snapshot, but you could you could leverage Cinder to take a copy of some. Of the, I I hope to learn uh, that kind of stuff. So I, I will split in two and go to the both. Okay, thank you. All right.